Everyone, Bill Nichols here. Today I want to bring you some news that's happening in the drone industry, uh, particularly for people that are looking to fly their drones for commercial purposes, so for work or business. Previously, and I've had a lot of questions around the FAA 333 exemption. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but I'll tell you some basics that I know. I applied for my FAA 333 exemption, and with that, a lot of people have thought that once you get that exemption, that you could fly your drone for commercial purposes. You can if you're a pilot, and you're, fly, you're flying within the rules that have been established, but if you're not a pilot, an actual private pilot or sport pilot or have a pilot, you know, you're a certified airman through the FAA, you're not flying your drone for commercial purposes. Your company could receive an FAA 333 exemption and you could hire a pilot in command, but you can't be the pilot in command. So there's a lot of confusion around that. And that is one of those things where I thought that that was excessive, but I was going through the point of um, deciding to go to flight school and get my private pilot license just so I could do that. And then I started hearing about Part 107 a few months back, or late last year. So originally, Part 107 uh, was going to be official in spring of this year, or late spring of this year. They just announced it today, and they threw down the guidelines of the rules. So this is a quick video. I'm going to go over Part 107 and what it means. <clears throat> and basically what they've done is that they've, they've uh, created a small class UAS rule. That's what the Part 107 is. And with that, they've launched some guidelines on what you need to be if you want to fly an unmanned aerial system for fun, for work. Um, how do you become a pilot? And then apply to a waiver to Part 107. So I'm going to step through some basics really quick today on this, show you what it means. It's actually very reasonable. I don't know that there are fees that have been established yet. I'll need to look that up. But if um, let's just jump right into it. So I'm going to start with, I've gone to the FAA.gov site gone to unmanned aerial systems, getting started in flying for work or business. So the instructions on this page, like they've said, they will become effective in August. So there's a 60 day period after they've made this announcement. <clears throat> after that 60 days, they have um, the part 107 will go into effect. So basically your pilot requirements, you've got to be 16 years old. You have to pass an initial aeronautical knowledge test at an FAA approved knowledge testing center and then uh, must be vetted by the TSA. People who already hold a pilot certificate issued under 14 CFR part 61 and they've completed a flight review within the previous two years, uh, can complete a Part 107 online training course, and they've got the link there. So there is um, going to be, if you look on the right here, top tasks, you still register your drone, so you should be registering your drone now if you're out flying it. Every single one needs to be registered. It's only $5. Do it, label your drone, and um, do that. Becoming a US, uh, UAS pilot, so that's coming soon, and then applying for a waiver. So if we look at the aircraft requirements, they need to be under 55 pounds, they have to be registered. Class G airspace. I'm not going to go into the details of that. I'm actually, I don't, um, I've read through what Class G is. You can look up, up on Wikipedia everywhere everywhere else, but I'm not going to go into the details there right now. Um, must fly under 400 feet, must fly during the day, must fly at or below 100 miles an hour, yield right away to manned aircraft, so really basic safety rules. Must not fly over people, must not fly from a moving vehicle. Now this is, um, there are some pieces around the moving vehicle where it said if you're in sparsely populated areas, that's okay, but you can't fly from another craft. So let's go into the part 107 summary. So these are the basic rules. And uh, what I've done is I've gone to becoming a pilot. So they have um, becoming a pilot here. And then to become a pilot, you must be at least 16 years old, read, speak, and write, and understand English. Exceptions may be made. Be in physical, mental health condition to operate safe to safely operate a small UAS and pass the initial aeronautical aeronautical knowledge exam at an FA approved testing center. I plan on doing this the day that it's available so that I can be up to par and uh, make sure that I'm operating my craft when I'm doing it for commercial purposes under the rules. So the application process basically schedule an appointment with the training center I mean with a knowledge testing center and they have a list pass the initial nautical test it has the test areas that include regulations, airspace classifications, weather sources, small unmanned aircraft loading and performance, a bunch of other pieces, complete FAA form 871013 for remote pilot certification, and then um, a confirmation email will be sent when an applicant has completed the TSA security background check. A permanent remote pilot certificate will be sent via mail once all other FAA internal processing is complete. And uh, so that's those are your steps. I'm going to put all of these links down below in the description. Then let's go over to the summary because the summary's got basically everything that's in the 107, you know, at a high level. 
So uh, the craft has to be less than 55 pounds. Visual line of sight only. So the air, unmanned aircraft must remain within visual line of sight of the remote pilot in command and the person manipulating the flight controls of the small UAS. So this is um, key because I get asked all the time, oh, can it go two miles, three miles, four miles, five miles? And I've said many times, that's not applicable. Now, I did in a remote area, took my Phantom out to see what the distance test was. I did also put a caveat out there that I would likely never fly it that far. So I took it out two miles, brought it back. I don't really ever fly my drone now without it being in line of sight. I think that it's a safety hazard, especially with the Phantom. You have blades that are spinning in sport mode at eight, 9,000 RPMs. Um, when you have an Inspire that weighs much more or something even larger, you have the real opportunity to create you know, damage and to injure people, you know, potentially causing fatal injuries. So you know, safety first, and you want to make sure that that is within line of sight so that you always have you know, that view of it. At all times, a small air, unmanned aircraft must remain close enough to the remote pilot in command and the person manipulating those flight controls for those people to be capable of seeing the aircraft with vision and not with FPV. Um, so not any other device besides corrective lenses. They might, they may not operate over any person who's not directly participating um, in the operation, and they can't be under a covered structure and not inside a covered stationary vehicle. So I guess you cannot fly your drone inside of your RV, your minivan. You can't fly it inside of your Prius. Daylight only operations. Now this is actually pretty reasonable. Um, or civil twilight. So you can go 30 minutes before sunrise and 30 minutes after sunset. Um, with appropriate anti-collision lighting. So it'll be interesting. We'll have to see if the lights that are on the Inspire and the lights that are on the Phantom, if that qualifies as anti-collision lighting, if it's bright enough, yield right of way to other aircraft. May use a visual observer, but it's not required. The first person view camera cannot satisfy see and avoid requirements, but it can be used as long as the see and avoid requirements are met in other ways. Max ground speed of 100 miles an hour. Maximum altitude 400 feet above ground level. Originally part 107, it looked like it was going to be 500 feet above, but 400 feet's fine. Weather visibility of three miles from the control station, so from where you are. Um, operations in class B, C, D, and E airspace are allowed with air traffic controller permission. Uh, operation in class G airspace are allowed without air traffic controller permission. No person may act as a remote pilot in command or visual observer for more than one unmanned aircraft operation at one time. No operations from a moving aircraft, so you can't be in a helicopter operating your drone. No operations from a moving vehicle unless the operation is over a sparsely populated area. So I think if you were, if you were, say, using the Typhoon with the Wizard, the Typhoon H, and you had that Wizard in your backpack, and you had it following you, or you were mountain biking, or you're doing a follow me video or something in a sparsely populated area, We'll have to look and see if there's an official definition of sparsely populated, if that's so many people per square mile or not. No careless or reckless operations. No carriage of hazardous materials. Uh, requires a pre-flight inspection by the remote pilot. You uh, can't operate it if you have uh, sufficient reason to know of any physical or mental conditions that would keep you from operating it safely. Uh, and then there's just some basic others. I'm not going to go through all the others, but there's some interesting ones like external load operations are allowed if the object being carried by the unmanned aircraft is securely attached. It does not adversely affect the flight characteristics. This one clause right here, this is going to open up Amazon, uh, UPS, FedEx, uh, Domino's, McDonald's to, uh, I can just imagine, uh, I don't know right now, but in the next few years, we could see the airspace below 400 feet with some um, Domino's drones delivering pizza. I know that Amazon is going to be all over this. Um, transportation of property for compensation or hire allowed provided that the aircraft, including its attached systems, payload and cargo weigh less than 55 pounds. The flight's conducted with an visual line of sight, not from a moving vehicle. So that's interesting. Um, that kind of takes out the other one up above. The flight occurs wholly within the bounds of a state and does not involve transport between Hawaii and another place in Hawaii through airspace outside Hawaii, etc. Remote piloting command, establish a remote piloting command. A person must either hold a remote pilot airman certificate. So if there are any pilots out there, I believe that this remote pilot airman certificate is brand new and doesn't cur currently exist. Um, so the person operating the drone must either hold a remote pilot airman certificate or be under the direct supervision of someone that does. So you can have a remote pilot in command. So that's way different than FAA 333. With that, it required that the pilot in command was an actual pilot, a certified airman through the FAA. Uh, there's the qualifications for a remote pilot certificate. And then a Part 61 certificate holders may obtain. So I think that's your Part 61. I think that's your airman. I'm not positive, so don't blast me on there. 
And then until international standards are developed, foreign certificated US, UAS pilots will be required to obtain an FAA, uh, an FAA issued remote pilot certificate. Remote pilot must, so here's a couple of things. Uh, remote piloting command must make available to the FAA the drone for inspection or testing and any associated documents records. Report to the FAA ten, within 10 days of any operation that results in at least serious injury, loss of consciousness, or property damage of $500. Conduct a pre-flight inspection to include specific aircraft and control systems. Ensure that the UAS complies with the existing registration requirements. Remote piloting command may deviate from the requirements of, of this rule in response to an in-flight emergency. Um, an FAA airworthiness certification is not required, um, but you must conduct a pre-flight check of the small UAS of the drone. Part 107 does not apply to model aircraft. That has uh, the public law that's listed there in section 336. And uh, that is your basic summary. So then over here, becoming a pilot, we've got the pieces over here that they're talking about with becoming a pilot and, um, and then applying for a waiver. And then one thing that I didn't know that the FAA has, now this app has really low ratings on the app, on the app store but they have this before you fly smartphone app if you haven't seen this it's worth checking out i downloaded to my um iphone and didn't realize that i was in an area where there was a small airport called the saddleback um exchange that was near my place 3.6 miles away that if i wanted to fly here i needed to notify air traffic control for that that's really interesting um, so i'll be doing that in the future but that's it guys i wanted to bring you a quick update on part 107 so if you're looking to fly commercially you know i've seen a lot of drone schools out there that are saying oh we'll issue you a flight certificate um, i'm not going to name one but there's one that's advertising on facebook right now and with them they say that you will be recognized as a pilot within their network that doesn't mean anything uh, pay attention to what the faa is doing uh, it's pretty simple to step through if you look at it. You've got part 107 now that's laying out pretty clear rules for what you need to do. And uh, I hope that they uh, you know, are really go going to establish you know, good knowledge and testing in this aeronautical knowledge test. And uh, that's it. So what do you think of it? Let me know below. If you have any questions, let me know. I am going to look in getting together with um, somebody that's you know well versed in drone law specifically about this and what this means going forward and what people should look out for so look out for that in the coming future and other than that i'm just getting ready for my road trip out to moab and back <clears throat> so I'll, I'll be posting every day during that trip with um probably some vlogging during the trip and then um, so you can see some behind the scenes stuff of shooting and then um, some other pieces that i'm doing so thanks a lot for watching today you keep watching i'll keep making videos and i'll talk to you soon